high ticket versus low ticket digital products, which is more profitable. Today you will discover the pros and cons of high ticket and low ticket digital products. And I will also give you my recommendations on what type of product to create first. So let's start with some simple definitions. So what is a high ticket product? So a high ticket product means a product that has a high price point, simple as that. High ticket products are usually planned and saved for in advance and customers will usually take a long time to decide whether to invest in a high ticket product. So what's a low ticket product? A low ticket product means a product that has a low price point. Low ticket products are usually impulse purchases and customers don't usually plan these types of purchases in advance and they don't usually have to save up for them for any length of time. So now let's look at the pros and cons of low and high ticket products. So although you will always find people keen to try and convince you to create low or high ticket products, both types of products actually come with their own advantages and disadvantages. So here are the pros and cons of each type of product to help you make a decision on what to do first. So here are the pros of high ticket products. So profit margins are usually very high because if you price high, then there's usually a lot more wiggle room when it comes to profit. You don't usually have a high volume of customer support to worry about because you have less customers. That means less customer support tickets to deal with. Customers who buy high end products are usually much easier to work with and they complain less. So they're much nicer people to work with usually. Each sale can give your business a substantial boost and give you extra cash reserves to help grow the business much more quickly because you've had a very high injection of cash. So now let's look at some of the high ticket product cons. So what are some of the disadvantages of high ticket items? So high ticket products require a lot more investment in terms of marketing and sales to sell them in the first place and they require a lot more time and individual attention, such as, for example, you might have to do one-to-one -one sales calls to close the sales. Another disadvantage is sales can be few and far between because there's less number of people who want to buy them. Another con is your business can fail or grow based on the back of just a few sales, which can be very risky. Also, advertising costs are very expensive to reach customers who will buy your high ticket products. And you have much less customers in the first place, which means you have less customers to buy your future products. And you will put off a lot of potential customers because they simply won't be able to afford your services. Creating high end products can take a lot more time than creating low ticket products because you have to give people value for money. And it's much harder to test high ticket products to see if they are going to be successful as so few people want to invest in them. So it can take a lot more money, a lot more time to see if it's even going to be successful. And it takes much longer to warm your customers up because they need to think about whether to invest in your products and then they have to save up for it first. So it takes much longer in the customer buying cycle before your customers end up buying from you. And it requires you to be much more confident to sell high ticket priced items. You have to be confident in yourself. You have to be confident in your product. And that confidence often doesn't come with your very first product. Usually it comes with a lower ticket priced product and you can see customer results. If you try and sell a higher ticket priced item to start with, then either you're going to have to create the whole thing in advance before you're even uh, confident in what you've created so that you can be confident in selling the high ticket item. But I don't recommend that because that means a lot of effort has gone into creating something which you haven't proven is going to sell or you can pre-sell a high ticket product. But again, it's probably not a good idea to pre-sell something if you haven't proven that you've got a customer audience 
ready to buy it because it's going to be very very costly to even pay for adverts to see if somebody is going to be willing to opt in for something that you are trying to pre-sell and you just don't have the confidence behind pre-selling something if it's your first product. And as it is much harder for you to start making sales, you won't get immediate feedback and therefore you can't make a decision very quickly about whether to continue selling this product or whether to create a new product. And if you don't see very many product sales, you might lose confidence in your product and you might end up giving up on your business entirely, which is something that we definitely want to avoid. So now let's look at some of the pros of low ticket products. So low ticket products don't take as much effort in terms of marketing and sales to sell them and sales can be easily automated which makes running your business much more simple and easy. Sales can come in thick and fast which is a really good feeling. Your business will be much more stable because you have many sales coming in from many different people which means you are spreading the risk across lots of different people. Advertising costs are so much cheaper to reach customers who will buy low ticket products because there are so much more of them. And you will have more customers, meaning that you have more customers to buy your future products. You will attract a lot more customers as more people will be able to afford your products. Creating low end products can be very quick and easy. And it's so much easier to test low ticket products to see if they're going to be successful as there are so many more people who want to invest in them in the first place. And it doesn't take very long to warm your customers up because they don't need to think about whether to invest in your product. They don't need to save up for your product, which means a lot more people can invest in your product straight away, even if they don't know you yet. You don't need to build up that know, like and trust, which means the customer buying cycle before your customers even buy from you is very short. So you can end up seeing a return on your investment straight away. And another great benefit is it doesn't require you to be very confident to sell low ticket items, which means it's much easier to get started with. And it is much easier for you to start making sales and you'll get much more immediate feedback because there'll be more customers who will give you feedback and they will move through your product much more quickly because it will be a shorter product and they'll be able to get results much faster and give you immediate feedback and testimonial. And this can mean that you can make a decision much more quickly about whether to continue selling this product or whether to create a new product for sale. And it's going to be so much easier to sell your product so much more quickly, which will boost your confidence. And you're so much more likely to continue on with your business if you see that your business is actually making money, that sales are coming in, people are getting results, and this is going to do wonders for your confidence. So what are some of the disadvantages of low ticket products? So the cons of selling low ticket products are that profit margins can be very high if you do use organic methods, but there is a cap to organic methods. There's a limit to it and you can't control organic methods. So you might reach a ceiling with that. And then if you want to scale, you have to invest in advertising. But when you start to invest in advertising, profit margins are not usually very high when you start to factor in the cost of the adverts. And if you start to sell a lot of your products, you'll need to invest in a customer support assistant as your company emails will be far too high for you to manage on your own. But in my opinion, that's a good problem to have. And personally, this was one of the very first hires I ever did was to invest in somebody to manage my customer emails because I was having a lot of customer emails. Customers who buy low end products can complain more and ask for more refunds, which is definitely a drawback. Your business may grow much more slowly if you only offer low ticket items. So now let's move on to a very important topic. We are going to discuss the front end versus the back end of your business. So when deciding what products to offer for sale, it's important to understand the difference between the front end and the back end of your business. Failing to understand these lessons can mean the difference between a business that succeeds 
or a business that fails. So it's very important to grasp the principles that I'm going to share with you. So make notes and really drum this into your head because this is one of the most important lessons in business that I could ever share with you. So what is the front end of your business? So the front end of your business is what prospects see before they buy. And this can include all of your free content, such as your blog posts, your podcasts, your videos, your opt-in freebies, emails to prospects and social media posts. And you will also offer your prospects something that they can buy when they first encounter your business. And this product will often be known as your core product. So the product that you are most well known for. And this product can define your whole business. So it's a good idea to choose a front end offer that defines your business very well. The product that you choose to help you acquire a customer should be something that has been proven to work for other businesses. So I'm going to repeat that again. So don't go trying to find a product that has never ever sold well for anyone else because if this is your first product, your first business, then this is not likely to succeed. If you want to create disruptor products in the marketplace, you need a lot of revenue behind you to really push these out and change the marketplace as a whole. So if this is your first product or first business, I highly recommend if you don't have a lot of money behind you to invest, then this should be something that has already been proven to work for other businesses. So find people that are similar to you and see what their most popular product is and then recreate something very, very similar to that. A concept that is very, very similar, but there should be a twist. You should put your own unique twist on it, your USP, unique selling proposition, something that makes you unique and it makes you stand out above the sea of all of the other similar products in the marketplace. It's something that people can grasp onto and think that is different. That is what I really need. And that's why all these other products haven't worked, but that's why this version of this particular product will work. And I'm going to give you an example of this a little bit later. So your front end product is your most important product by far. And you might need to test many different products before you find something that sells well, because this is the most important thing that you can do. So you need to put time and effort into finding something that's really going to work. And although your front end product will be your highest selling product by far, it will probably be your least profitable product if you are paying for advertising costs to acquire a new customer. If you're relying on organic free methods, then it will be very profitable for you because you don't need to pay anything out before you get your customers. So that's why it's worth doing both. It's worth doing organic methods and paying for advertising so you can scale up your business. So now that we've looked at the front end of your business, what is the back end of your business? So the back end of your business is what additional products your customers see for sale before they buy for a second time. So these people have already bought from you once and you are selling to them again. So although the back end of your business includes customers who have bought from you once, it doesn't mean to say that you need to exclude all of your free content from your existing customers, such as your blog posts, your podcasts and all that kind of stuff, because it's important to keep your customers engaged with your brand by keeping them in the loop and sharing all of the free stuff with you as well. But the back end products that you are actually selling will not be what you are most known for. And it often helps to take your customers on a journey to get a complete solution to their problem. So your back end products can either involve offering your customers more of the same thing that they've already bought, but just give them a larger quantity of them, or you can give them more support with the kind of thing that they've already bought. So for example, 
say for example you gave them on the front end you sold them a bundle of 10 templates on the back end you could offer them a bundle of 100 templates or you could offer them a mini course on the front end of your business teaching them how to get their first 10 followers on Instagram and on the back end of your business you can offer them a full signature course teaching them how to make sales from Instagram or you can offer your customers additional products that help them solve their problems from different angles. So if you're teaching people business like I am, then I have a range of different products that teach people all aspects of business from planning their business, getting their mindset and their manifestation in the right place, from creating the product, from marketing the product, selling the product. So there's a customer journey that people need to go on and they need to go through to get their ultimate result which is a successful business so there might be many different products involved in that journey and you don't have to find a unique USP for your back end products but it really does help but you don't need it because your customers already know like and trust you so they are much more likely to buy any other products that you offer in the future and your back end products should give good results to your customers, but they don't need to be constantly tested as long as they are selling well enough. And your back end products will give you the highest amount of profit because you don't need to pay for advertising costs to acquire a customer. And it's much more easy for your existing customers to buy your second of products if they liked the first product that they bought. So now that we've addressed what the front end of your business should look like and what the back end of your business should look like. Now I'm going to answer the question, what type of product should you start with when you are creating your first profitable product, i.e. the product that is going to make you a profit, which product should you start with? So your only job when you start a new business should be to find a product that you can offer on the front end to generate a large group of customers for your business. And when you have started to build up a database of customers for your business, you can start to offer them additional products on the back end to boost your profits. And if you price your front end products high, you will attract a very small pool of customers to your business. And this is a very risky business model because it depends on either word of mouth marketing or a certain advertising price. But if either of these changes, your business will likely fail because you don't have enough customers on the back end of your business to keep your business profitable. And you are not as likely to be able to scale your business if you can't continue to find high-end customers on the front end of your business. So if you price your front end products low, you will attract a much bigger pool of customers to your business. And your business will be much more stable as a result because you'll be able to acquire new customers a lot more easily and cheaply. And you'll have a big pool of customers on the back end ready to buy your other products. So therefore, I recommend that you start your business by offering low ticket products on the front end. And only when you found a product that is selling well on the front end, should you move on to creating more products on the back end for the big group of customers that you already have in your business. So how do we then scale up our businesses from there? So you've got your front end product and it's selling well. And when you've got a big group of customers that you have got results for and they loved your front end product, you can then start to create other products to offer them as well. So your back end products should either be higher ticket products or recurring payment style products which is the best way to keep your business very stable. And you should focus all of your efforts on selling your front end products when you first start your business. But after it's selling well, you should turn your attention to creating a suite of new products on the back end. So here is my example. For my business called Green Thickies, my front end product is my seven day detox. Now you've probably heard 
of seven day detoxes before. This concept is not unique. This product is very similar in nature to things that are already selling well in the health niche. There are thousands of seven day detoxes already on the market because they are one of the most popular weight loss and health products that people can create. And savvy people recognize that and they think, well, I see somebody else selling a seven day detox, so I'm also going to sell a seven day detox. So that's what I did as well. But I had to have a USP. So my USP for my seven day detox is that the detox is based on drinking green thickies. So green thickies has its own USP because green thickies, which is a drink, it includes a formula for creating homemade healthy weight loss shakes that provide all of your nutrients. Are there the right number of calories for weight loss? They taste delicious, they're quick to make, and the ingredients can be found locally. So it's a USP within a USP. And because of that, I managed to set myself apart from every other seven day detox on the market. And this is now my highest selling product. And it is the only product that I offer on the front end of my green thickies business. And on the back end, I sell other recipe books, bundles, and my weight loss system, which is a membership that offers 12 months worth of meal plans. And I have also offered further high ticket items, such as coaching on the back end. So I hope that's helped you to see the difference between low ticket products and high ticket products and the difference between the front end of your business and the back end of your business and that the best starting point for you is to create a low ticket offer on the front end that has a USP that's very similar to other products out there but it offers something a unique twist on that product that sets you apart from everyone else and then when you get successful selling this product on the front end, then you can go on to create products on the back end. So now it's your turn to go and put your stamp on the world.